The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Hey folks, it's been two weeks, tons of stuff to talk about, let's get into it. The top story uh, this time is I did not submit to the Artificial Life Conference this year. Uh, as always, I had great ambitions, uh, um, but once I settled down to actually start working on it, you know, with like three weeks, two weeks left, uh, it didn't come together and I wasn't happy with the way it was coming out and I decided to let it go. Uh, um, and the, uh, the deadline was March 7th, but we knew it was going to be extended to March 14th. It was. It's now March 16th. The, the, uh, uh, it looks like the submission window is still actually open, but I didn't write anything. I mean, I wrote tons of code, but I didn't write a paper. And, you know, it, this is sad in a way because it's been sort of a tradition uh, that, you know, each spring uh, there's a bunch of stuff that's happening uh, on the T2 Tile project that I'm not talking about because it's kind of the obligation that I sort of think to uh, uh, if you're going to submit something new to a conference or journal or whatever, that you're not supposed to really talk about it until the uh, paper comes out. And I never really liked that that much, but, you know, that's the way it was. So, you know, for the last two years, in 2019 and in 2020, we put up the wall of science uh, between the spring, like around February, March, and like July, uh, uh, on a bunch of work. And, you know, I didn't really like doing that. But of course, you know, it just is what it is. And, you know, what I would feel like for trying to do this year is, um, I want to develop the stuff in the open. I mean, I'm going to talk later, uh, sort of the feature story for this uh, this up update, uh, a, a little mission status review to try to reset and put things in context. But what we're actually trying to accomplish here, or at least my vision for what we're actually trying to accomplish, and see how far we've gotten and what the next steps might be. And the stuff that I was trying to produce for the A Life Conference was some of that. Uh, that said, uh, uh, there is another call uh, for the A Life 2021 conference, which is now fully online. Uh, they were hoping at first to have it be hybrid in Prague and online, but, you know, world being what it is, it's virtual. Uh, uh, the deadline for art and visualizations is April 25th. And, you know, we'll see. It's not out of the question. Uh, uh, and, you know, there's the, uh, the logo, uh, robot person without the mask on and the art and visualizations call, uh, uh, all online and so forth. And, you know, in, in the, uh, 2020 A, A Life, uh, art, uh, competition, which I was one of the judges for, there was a, there was a prize for sort of sciency related art visualization as well as sort of art for art's sake visualization. And, you know, it's possible, you know, we'll see. We might have something to say in a month. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Also, uh, in the last two weeks, I started a new uh, <laughs> uh, YouTube channel, uh, the third one now, uh, um, and uh, which currently has no subscribers. You can be the first subscriber. Uh, uh, the purpose of the MFM, the T2 Demos uh, channel, is to just collect the little, you know, two to three minutes or the pop song length uh, visualizations of, it doesn't have to be purely art or jokey or funny. It can have a scientific purpose as well, but it just needs to be really boiled down, you know, maybe absolute tops five minutes. Uh, and so far, uh, I, I've brief demonstrate brief video demonstrations and i put up the uh the Eugene uh, uh video which is now at the moment on both but uh and i'm going to put up the don't cross the streams on uh, t2 demos and in the future uh they will go there so if, if people are interested and maybe someday people will uh, uh you know a, a wider audience you know We've got our core of 150, 100, 150 people that, that, that seem to uh, check out the updates, uh, you know, in tempo. And, and you know, thank you, folks. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, it's not by, you know, Winter Gothon standards, by Colin First standards, by all the YouTube stars. It's, it's nothing. It's a rounding error. But it's 150 people uh, that uh, I feel are, are sort of part of the team and are are. are 
staying along with the plot. So I, I need feel an obligation to number one, uh, advance the plot. <laughs> number two, uh, let people know uh, what what has been happening, even if I don't know whether it's a success or a failure yet, because the story isn't written yet. So. Uh, um, there could be a, a broader audience of people that don't really want to follow the blow by blow on it, but be, wouldn't mind dropping in to see a, a little piece of candy every so often. That's what T2 Demos is for. Be happy to get as much pushing uh, uh, on social media, of course, uh, uh, as we can, but at the moment there's only uh, one or two videos there. But uh, uh, here's a teaser uh, uh, for uh, another uh, T2 uh, demo, which I'm hoping to release next week, although we'll see how it all works out. Uh, um, that uh, should be sort of fun, and, and nobody's seen it yet. Uh, um, in addition, also on YouTube, there's uh, uh, some new voices appearing, uh, uh, as, making suggestions and asking questions. I had, I had a certain amount of engagement, and that was really good. I thank, th thank you folks a lot for uh, raising issues and, and just letting me know you're thinking about this stuff, because that really helps. Uh, Brian Kennard, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I feel like he, he's a recent uh, uh, arrival, but I'm not positive. Uh, 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 he found the research when, when looking for modular motherboard back plain list scalable connector design on Google. You Google that, you actually can find something about back from 2008 that I've talked about it a little bit before that, that ended up in the, a, a wired uh, online wired lab article. I don't remember exactly what. Hardware hackers create a modular motherboard. This is where I learned uh, a little bit about, uh, you know, quotations and <laughs> accuracy in journalism. Uh, uh, you know, nothing against Priya Ganapati. I, I don't know that I ever spoke to her, her directly, him or her, I actually don't know. Uh, uh, her, I think. Uh, um, but, you know, so what well, says David Ackley, associate professor, we have CPU serial ports for connectivity on every two square inches. That's that's not actually what I said. I said on every two inches squared, uh, two inches squared, not the same as two square <laughs> inches. Uh, uh, and even inside quotes, it, it, it doesn't come out right. Uh, uh, yeah, there's the picture of them, the, 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 the IXMs, the Illuminato X Monica, Machina, two inches squared. Uh, uh, there are advantages to a central plant structure, but eventually we run into great inefficiencies. I'm not exactly sure I use that word either. Uh, it's really hard. You know, we have efficiency built into our brain so much as that is the nature of the good that even if you say you're doing something else, you're doing robustness and they say, oh, will that lead to more efficiency? And you have to say, well, actually, no, it leads to less efficiency, but it leads to more robustness. It's like, oh, it sounds very efficient. So, um, and, and Brian Kennard also linked to these folks uh, who I hadn't heard about that I Googled for a moment, and it seems like they do uh, FPGA stuff and this open FPGA project. And here's the thing, you know, uh, I've talked about the Illuminato X Machina, the IXM, uh, a few times before, but, uh, 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 right, when I looked long ago, FPGAs had unfortunate limits on dynamic reconfigurability. Uh, um, and, you know, so here's a little bit of show and tell. Uh, uh, this is the... Uh, Papilio Pro, and and that's a, 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 a an FPGA right in the middle there, that big chip. Uh, this was this was designed and built by a guy named Jack Gassett up in Colorado, uh, um, who I actually worked with sort of on and off. And the idea would be, he, you know, he was selling these, and I and I thought, you know, what if we could take all these pins and move them around so that we could connect one of his Papilio Pros to other Papilio Pros, and and in con and you know he designed in consultation with me the eightfold Mega Wing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, like that, which is basically a connector board with, you know, there's a little bit extra stuff on it. And the idea is, you know, you take a Papilio Pro and it plugs in uh, on a half stride, you know, half, uh, you know, slightly off one way and slightly off the other way. Uh, um, I don't know if I can actually do this, but when you get it right, uh, uh, you can plug them in. I'm not going to be able to get it right. It won't take the time. But like that, so you can tile the uh, the, the uh, wiring into tile boards, and you can tile the Papilio Pros behind them. We did did one generation of this, never actually got it working. I did go down the road of learning enough about uh, uh, FPGAs to learn how to make it like a, a little CPU, a little tiny processing unit inside an FPGA. 
tried to start building the uh, communications mechanism. So these things, I mean, if this thing had gotten working, uh, uh, it would be, you know, blazing fast as far as the communications compared to where the T2 tiles are, are, so, are so very slow. But engineering, I mean, hardware is just one trade-offs after another. Uh, um, and uh, so, but Brian Kennard, it turns out, you know, ICE 40 LP, brr, 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 Google that, it turns out, you know, that's an FPGA. And uh, I, I really don't have him followed exactly what he's doing. He, he you know, could help but get some, some links or something that I'd actually look at. Maybe uh, Brian and I could talk at some point. I've solved dynamic FPGA reconfiguration in an object-oriented way. I mean, if you squint, that's kind of looks like what the T2 tile is trying to do. Take a, a uniform, relatively uniform hardware platform, which is what a field programmable gate array is or does, and uh, allow it to talk to others of its own kind so that it, at one moment it can be acting like a dreg, at one moment it can be acting like a sorter, and so forth, without the hardware actually changing, just by dynamic reconfiguration of the same existing hardware. So, uh, uh, Brian, in any case, thanks for stopping by and making contacts. Uh, uh, <coughs> all right, and uh, this uh, video, that is not my house. Uh, <laughs> uh, we and now, uh, I think for the first time in the history of the universe, a, a T2 tile is booted up uh, uh, not by me, uh, or not by uh, us here in uh, Strider, uh, who uh, I've known since uh, UNM days, uh, uh, has been uh, working on software. Uh, in particular, he's uh, forked a version of the underlying engine stuff to update, to upgrade the graphics and the inter interface stuff. Uh, there's a particular library called SDL that I use, the old one, uh, that he's now upgraded MFMS, the simulator later to and you know the next logical step to be able to merge that stuff because there is so much commonality between the code base for the simulator and the code for MFMT2 that runs on the tiles is that he needed a, a tile to actually try out if he could port the code the SDL2 it's called code uh, to the tile so uh, I shipped him a whole little care package with a tile and a power supply and a serial cable and and he is now beginning that road. Uh, he's put up a couple of videos. Uh, he's got, he's talking to it from a Mac. Uh, um, and, uh, he's, he's, he's got, uh, in the T2 splat code, uh, there's stuff going on. And in particular, uh, he's got a journal file. You know, I encourage folks to keep an eye on that, you know, if you're more interested to see what's going on. Uh, uh that's very exciting. It's very terrifying, you know. <laughs> uh, these things are, rare. Uh, uh, <coughs> but uh, Strider says, you know, I found the title to be much more robust than I had imagined. All right. So that's that. Finally, uh, it's now been a year since uh, we incorporated the living, since we formed the Living Computation Foundation, our nonprofit to try to back all this work and to, you know, build outreach for the ideas more generally, as well as the specific computational ideas. Uh, um, <coughs> Spring incorporated spring of 2020. Uh, uh, right now it's spring of 2021. It's time to do our first tax return uh, for the foundation. You know we've 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 raised a little bit of money. We've raised uh, uh, we've spent a little bit of money, uh, um, and you know we have our uh, LCF nerds. Uh, we're now up to the 240 series of LCF nerd numbers. Uh, um, and, you know, we have some monthly contributors. Thank you, folks, uh, uh, so much. Uh, um, exactly how we're going to position everything. You know, and I, I use the LCF. I, I use LCF, Living Computation Foundation, trying not to say the the. Uh, uh, I use Living Computation Foundation as my main affiliation now. Like, uh, uh, so uh, uh, step by step. All right, and so that's the news. Uh, um, now, we put out these uh, little videos, we put out these little art goofy things like don't cross the streams and so forth, and people can look at them and they can think they're interesting or funny or pretty or not or whatever it is, and that's all good. And I think T2 demos are really important, not just for outreach, in a sort of art and, you know, fun to look at sense, well, partly fun to look at sense, 
but also in the sense of training our eyes what these systems look like. They are not ka-chunk, 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 like uh, the master uh, synchronizer that makes everything perfect. There's always little ripples around the edges. And that's the way these systems work. And so having these demos, all different ways that shows, you know, things spreading, things coming together, whatever it is, is all important, I think, uh, for training our eyes. Uh, the bigger picture is that we're going to take this bottom-up, distributed, robust-first approach and work our way back to our work our way up to a computational framework powerful enough to do useful work. And, uh, er, 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 there we go. Uh, uh, right. And so this kind of comment that comes up on YouTube about, you know, when, when can I start, you know, use, deal with my Excel dialogue using this sort of thing? Or, you know, when is this going to implement a spreadsheet? Or could I use this for video gaming? You know, it's, it's a, it's a standard kind of question comes up. It's all variations of, you know, what is the killer app, uh, uh, for this thing, you know? And, and my answer is, you know, the, the, you know, if there's a killer app, I wouldn't tell you <laughs> because this is early research. This is research and development, but that doesn't mean there isn't a goal, a plan, a path. Uh, um, so I don't even know if any of this is actually visible, but so here's the idea. We're building a whole new computational stack from physics to, you know, people to society. And, uh, you know, at each scale, things uh, get bigger. Uh, so we've got, you know, physics is concerned with picoseconds to milliseconds, uh, you know, on this cartoon story. Chemistry is milliseconds to a second and so forth. Uh, uh, and there's computing analogs for all of this that, you know, from one bit to an event window is sort of the domain of physics. And from, uh, you know, one to a thousand sites, perhaps, is the domain of chemistry. And right on up the stack. And so what we're trying to do is build our way up that stack. And, you know, and here's how our progress that we've made. We've got actual tiles running that are doing bits. We've got languages for supporting, manipulating those bits. Uh, for the chem the chemistry, for the order of a thousand sites or so, uh, we've got various demos, and we're going to keep working working on that, but we want to start moving on to the next step, the biology step, where we have uh, something like a cell, something bigger than an atom, much bigger than an atom, that there are many copies of it that are related, similar, differentiated, identical, whatever it is, that interact to perform some larger problem, because that's going to be the key to reaching a first level of utility. We're not going to expect to find a, to make a marketable app using individual sites and atoms. It's got to be stuff that's doing something complex in a collaborative fashion and that's what this is getting at and that's where we are now we're sort of at the tipping edge between sort of digital chemistry and digital biology on this point of view so, uh, you know, in at physics, you know, we have MFM, MFMS, the simulator, MFMT2, the tile engine, those are physics level. Uh, uh, ULAM, SPLAT, and SPOT uh, from last year, the stage priority operation teams, uh, uh, those are dealing with coordinating, you know, groups of atoms, you know, perhaps hundreds or thousands, but not millions or billions, not directly. There's going to need to be more structure. There's going to need to be more organization in order to do that. Uh, uh, and biology is the next stop, multicellular reproduction, differentiation, and signaling. So here it is, uh, running, taking a lot of time. I'm, I'm going to chop off part of this here, but uh, so the goal, my goal, a goal, a proposed goal for 2021 is to actually get high enough up in the biological systems so that we can do simulated simple control system demos. Like we have a simulated robot, perhaps something as simple as a Breitenberg vehicle that sort of turns toward the light or perhaps even something more complicated like a cart pole, a traditional problem for simulated robotics. But what we do is we take a simulation of it and we connect it to the real grid. We have new hardware that does input and output in some fashion around the periphery of the grid, perhaps injected into the center of it, who knows, uh, uh, and we let it flow through doing its biological, chemical, physical type bottom-up processing, and we take signals off it and we say, okay, as far as the simulation is concerned, that was 100 milliseconds or something, even if it takes 20 minutes in reality for us to do it. That's the goal that I would like to achieve. I'd like to achieve a lot more goals, but that implies many of them. Uh, um, and 
Uh, all right. So yeah, and you know, so getting to reproduction and differentiation in cell structures is what I've been focusing on. What I was trying to focus on for the uh, uh, A Life twenty twenty one that I did not end up submitting to. I was working on uh, uh, stuff that going all the way back to two thousand sixteen, which was a very simple minded method of copying structures. This is an example of a structure being copied that I called the two D printer uh, uh, back then. Uh, I was trying to uh, refresh it. Uh, now over the last couple of weeks and you know it's exactly one of these horrible early technology failures like rockets falling over left and right and crashing and the early attempts to fly with we, airplanes with six wings going three feet and then folding up that's what was happening to me uh, uh, trying to get this replication method working so you know here I've got a, a scribbled little blue thing of stuff that's meant to be copyable by the 2D printer technology and the idea is it, it, it passes swap lines through a special kind of swap line to copy line by line and then deposit them and until it's made a copy. So there's a bunch of swap lines going through and there's some kind of horrible uh, transporter accident and, you know, uh, evil Kirk shows up on the transporter pad or in this case it's actually more just sort of a puddle of Kirk-related goo is what I got this time. You know, eventually I fixed enough of the bugs so I started getting more interesting failures uh, like this one. Uh, I got an absolutely perfect copy but mirror image. Uh, talk about evil Kirk. Uh, um, and and so now that's what that's where we're at. This is running on the keymaster. We've got a little, you know, something make a little squiggle, and let's see if we can uh, reproduce it. So that's the next T2 demo in the service of the larger goal of we need to be able to make cellular structures, bigger things, hundreds of cells that would be bunches of them, which will rebuild themselves from scratch, and uh, if in case something goes wrong, and reconnect and so on. That's where we are now. We shall see. Going forward, I'm going to keep working on uh, the the new T2 printer stuff, the uh, copier, the reproduction system, because it's it's getting close and it's it really is kind of cool and interesting things go wrong still. Uh, uh, but also for the next update, uh, it's going to be the Hyperspace Academy second lecture. This is this whole other thread that will come together in the end if we manage to do enough work. The we are coders, we ship code uh, uh, way of looking at the world way of looking at human interactions, way of looking at computational interactions. Uh, uh, we shall see. Thanks for being here. I hope you're doing all right. Hope to see you in two weeks.